A lot of people know me from having done three musicals on the main stage of the Shakespeare Theatre Company, and I have absolutely loved doing them. But since I was young, Shakespeare was a passion of mine, and I decided I would be a director when I was 21 years old and a senior in college. I was transitioning from being an actor to being a director, and I came out of school and thought that I would work immediately, and that Broadway would happen by the time I was 25. But when you leave school to be a director, no one is begging you to come to their company. So I had to do what most young directors do, which is make their own work. So a friend of mine and I decided that we would produce a summer season of classical plays. I would direct Richard II, which he would produce. He would direct Mandragola by Machiavelli, which I would produce. And they would run in rotating repertory in Chicago. We raised the money and we played for six weeks that summer. And it was because of that experience that I got a meeting with Michael Kahn and Michael Kahn decided to hire this strange 21-year-old to come to the theater. I've spent the last nine years immersed in classical theater, having a staunch opinion about what I think it should be and having really living in it. So it's really exciting for me to finally take all those dreams and things I've learned and put them on stage. The, the truth is, people believe that a classical director and a director who does musicals are very different things. And I can understand that because they normally don't come in the same package. But my three heroes are proof that they do. The first one of those heroes is Michael Kahn. Everyone knows Michael from the immense body of work he's done in classical theater. But Michael's also worked extensively in opera and directed a revival of Showboat on Broadway. Jack O'Brien, within a two-year span, directed Hairspray on Broadway and Henry Four Parts One and Two at Lincoln Center Theater. And Bart Shear, who is now one of the major directors of New York, directs everything from South Pacific to the classics. I think that the, the link between musical theater and classical theater is actually uh, not that far away. Because they both demand a director who can work with a big group of people. They both demand extraordinary musicality. You have to have musicality to do a musical, but you have to have musicality to understand the pace and flow of an entire evening of Shakespeare. I call it a symphonic movement because you have to understand how to move a play forward musically, using the music of verse and the music of people in space. So they're not that far away from each other and I'm glad you're gonna see the other side of what I really love to do. The, the big pink elephant in the room is every other production of Romeo and Juliet that has gone on for 400 years. It is so in the front of our minds, that balcony scene, what it looked like in the Zeffirelli movie, what it looked like when we did it in high school, and every single version of this play. So when Michael Kahn asked me to do it, I lived for a full year with the weight of that on my shoulders. And for a long time, that was a big weight. How can I possibly have a new interpretation when everyone has seen it? And ultimately, after I struggled through that, you know, in a visceral way, I came to the conclusion that everyone's done everything, so all I have to do is do it my way and do a production that speaks to the things that I feel are important in the play, which is a, a, the most incredible love story that's ever been told, but in a very specific circumstance. The play explores suicide in an interesting way. Shakespeare had a real knowledge of what suicide was psychologically long before there was psychology or any medical explanation for it. You see it in the first scene of the play. The play explores a very specific family that begins to fall apart and that hangs on in the face of grief in an unimaginable way. And the play explores what parenting actually means because there are actual parents in the play for Romeo and Juliet, and then there are the parents that they go to, who are the nurse and the friar, and how those figure into an adolescent's life. So I wanted to capture a whole world and bring it to life in a way that would be meaningful for an audience today. And that's very different from what Zeffirelli did, or even what Baz Luhrmann did, because the things that we live with are different than they were 20 years ago or 45 years ago. So that's the reason to come to the theater, and that's the reason for me to do it. And I think that's the reason why 400 years later, we're still fascinated by this play.